What's going on, wrestling fans? Thanks for tuning in to the Wrestle Report, episode four, with Phil and Don. I am Phil. I'm Don. And this weekend, we got a pretty big one here. We got TakeOver 30 and SummerSlam weekend. It's the biggest party of the pandemic, I guess. But there should be <laughs> there should be some good uh, wrestling going on. It was an interesting week, though, without um, AEW on Wednesdays. Like, I watched NXT. Good show. We're going to get into that soon. But my Wednesdays did feel a little empty without AEW. I'll be very honest with you. But uh, overall, it was a good show. I want to start at the very top with running unopposed. We don't talk ratings a lot on the show. So I don't think they matter as much as people make it out. But I was interested. Yeah, for real. How are they going to be unopposed? Like, that, that is a reasonable thing to ask, I think. That, that was my question, too. Like, is, is it going to be higher than they are, or are they going to stay the same way? Right. I'm hoping that was a lot uh, larger. I, know, I didn't even check it out yet. All right. So the number for this week is 853,000, which is up mightily from last week of 619,000. Granted, 6, 619, 619 is very low for their average. So they, yeah. it wasn't hard for them to improve from last week. But when you look at it that way, the round number there, they added 234,000. You know, there are people that are saying, you know, how did they not crack a million being unopposed? I think that's a little unfair. I mean, AEW's only cracked a million two or three times, and that was, like, within the first five episodes. So I think for people saying that is a little unfair. But um, 850 is a solid number. I think they would have enjoyed getting into that nine territory because while yeah. AEW hasn't cracked a million in a while, they do – you know, every couple of weeks they build and build and build and they crack a nine, which is, which is good. Mm -hmm. 900,000, obviously, but um, overall pretty good ratings. What were you, again, I don't think you're in the camp of, Oh, this should have hit a million, but is that about what you expected? You know, 800. Yeah, I, expect, I expected around the 800 to 900. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it going over, over 950 to be mm -hmm. honest, which is okay. It's, it was still a great show. And if you watch, if you miss it, you missed a good show, good go home show. Yeah. Uh, here's my here's my problem with the ratings. I'm surprised we've gone four episodes without me going on this rant because I have this problem with even Raw and SmackDown. Like it's funny to look at their ratings and stuff, but listen, man, like I haven't missed an episode of AEW since it aired, but at no point has my view shown up in the ratings because I stream it on the TNT app, and from what I understand, mm -hmm. that's not part of the ratings and, and i don't know if you have regular cable but i know for a while you were using the usa app for raw and everything and your your yeah. your views don't count for that either so like at the end of the day what is the ratings really telling you it's who's watching it in the old school cable way in my like is that accurate i think like it's not an accurate rating yeah um i know for sure my my rating count because i actually have the tv now the actual cable now it does so yeah. so so yeah but, but that um there's supposedly like another another uh rating system for digital yeah uh, but I don't, i'm not i'm not 100 sure about that though but, but and i'm sure there is another one i'm sure if somebody dug that could find out the digital ratings but these numbers that get reported every week those are not in those so it's an extreme, oh, yeah, sure. like like i think it's safe to assume that both of these more than a million people are watching both shows if you factor in the digital like easily and at the end of the day also let's say both uh, shows in a day like even their old school ratings are cracking eight hundred thousand. that means one and a half million people watched wrestling on a wednesday that's good for the mm -hmm. industry that's what i care about you know oh yeah and you know raw and smackdown will always kind of have that you know, over a million threshold because people, it's just religious now. Like you, you, you turn on Raw on Mondays. SmackDown's a little different because it has jumped from Tuesdays to Thursdays to Fridays, but it always finds its groove. And I think being on Fox helps a lot. Like I can't oh, remember yeah, the last yeah. time I watched SmackDown and now like I don't, I don't have cable. I have like the digital antenna, but you can get Fox. So on if I'm home on a Friday and I'm like, oh, it's 8, 12, I'll put on SmackDown. I forgot it was on. And like, that's how I've watched most of the Smack. Most of the time, you know, every once in a while I'll find something good. Like when they actually let Chad Gable wrestle on i'm not calling him the other name but uh when they actually <laughs> when they actually let chad gable wrestle like a 10 minute match like you find some good stuff on there sometimes but um yeah i it's fun to look at the ratings but like i don't know how accurate they really are um but i was interested this particular week on running unopposed and next week AEW is airing on thursday because the nba playoffs aren't on that day apparently so they'll run truly unopposed also, because this week or on Saturday, while TakeOver is going on, I don't really think that's going to take away from TakeOver, but um, 
it could – they're either going to have a really good rating on Saturday or, or it could be really bad depending on, like, what's going on. Like, granted, it's still a pandemic. Not everybody's going out anymore. So, like, I'm interested to see their number, but they are looking at a different – they're not running unopposed. They're running against, you know, a network special show, which they're trying to make yeah. their their episode also – kind of like that like I think Brody Lee and Cody are fighting for the TNT championship they're having the that women's cup final that they've been streaming on YouTube like the final match of that is on that show there's probably some other things I forgot about but it's no it's not just a regular dynamite episode they're trying to you know sauce it up a little bit but they're definitely making it a special I saw the commercials for it yeah and it's like uh they're making it like more of a more of a special than yeah. uh than just a regular show and I guess we might as well get this out now uh, while we're talking to AEW. Not this show. would have been. It kind of would have been nice if they could do it for this show. But starting next week on Thursday, they will have 15, uh, sorry, 10% capacity fans in the Daily's Place. And they said in September they might be able to up that to 15. Uh, the tickets are $30. I've already kind of looked into it for future shows. I don't know, Don, if you feel like taking a trip to Jacksonville in a couple of weeks. I'm and, all for it, man. Let's do it, right, man. Yeah, I was talking with, <laughs> with Billy and Jake today. Shout out to them. They'll be on here eventually. Um, you know, we all think you have to buy in two, three, or four. So you have to buy in a group. So like, I mm-hmm. guess if you got no friends, you're kind of out of luck on this. But, um, you know, I guess because they're going to group you together and then give you space on each side. And, you know, um, but yeah, $30 a ticket is the cheapest one. I think it goes up to 60 or 70 um, to get like to the lower bowl or whatever. But I would definitely like to check it out. I think it'd make a great story to come back and tell. They're probably going to be doing this. I mean, what do they maybe get to twenty percent capacity by the end of the year? But oh, I think, it's, but this is oh, really, man. this is really what you're looking at. Um, mm-hmm. And to counteract that, WWE has definitely gone a different route. We reported last week that they're going to be at Amway Center this whole weekend, starting on SmackDown, starting tomorrow actually. Some of the leaks have come out about photos of the virtual fan situation. Um, it looks kind of cool. It's definitely going to take some getting used to. It's very. It's NBA set up on steroids, really. Like, this is wall-to-wall screens and stuff. And um, I don't know. Like, it's gonna, I think it's going to be a thousand times better than what they've been doing. Uh, what do you – you actually b- – uh, before we got on, on air, you, you said you had kind of like an insight to this, too, uh, leading into it. Yeah, I had a friend actually that, uh, that does – he's like a stagehand for a company out here in Florida. And supposedly they, was, they got booked to, to – set up the arena for SummerSlam and NXT. Nice. Uh, and I, he showed me some pictures of some stuff that they got going on. And it looks it looks interesting. I'm ready I'm ready to see how it is. Uh, I wanna be in the Thunderdome. Yeah. Uh, just just to just to see that experience too as well. And you said you looked into being one of the people, right? How what is that even because yeah. I thought about I saw it with the NBA and I'm like, oh well, that'd be kinda cool. You know the magic actually made the playoffs. So maybe I, I would check that out. But um yeah, what was what's the process for that? For anybody wondering, you said you've looked into it. Yeah, um, well, well, you got to be quick on it because they I they bet. they just they just tweeted it out on Twitter, um, and I I clicked on and I put my name and my name my first name last name, uh, email address, uh, and I checked hit the check for uh, that I'm not a robot, <laughs> and and, uh, and the then fire it shows, <laughs> yeah yeah right. <laughs> Uh, and then it got. Then it just took me to the area, and they saying that it's registration is closed, unfortunately, at that time. Ooh. So if you're on Twitter, if you're always on Twitter and you and you follow WWE, look out for them because because they'll they'll tell you when to try to sign up. I'll say because it's I'll probably going to be a different group of people for Raw yeah, and SmackDown and NXT. Sometime. So that, yeah, get new yeah. people in there. Um, is it through Zoom? Is it through Skype? Like, did it mention any of that? It, it did not mention that. I'm pretty sure it's gonna probably be Zoom. Yeah, um, Zoom runs the world right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you got in on Zoom in like late 2019, like you're sitting big right now. Oh yeah, yeah, de- definitely. Um, yeah, you know th- this uh, podcast isn't sponsored by Zoom, but it's definitely making it happen. So we do appreciate <laughs> what they're doing out thank there. Thank you, Zoom. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, so. Go home show for NXT. We just mentioned it rained on a post, so all eyes are on it. I watched NXT live for the first time in a while. Um, again, don't have cable. Shout out to Twitch. That's all I'm going to say. If you don't know, you don't have a way to watch NXT. A lot of people stream it on Twitch. Don't, you know, not trying to be a snitch or nothing, but it helped me watch it. So definitely check that out. Um, so the go home show, I don't know if you want to mention other things, but to me, the biggest thing, and it, it probably drew a lot of the ratings, was the standoff between Pat McAfee. And um, 
and Adam Cole. He brought his boys out, A.J. Hawk, one of them, former Super Bowl champion for the Packers. Um, another – I keep forgetting the guy's name. I feel so bad. Uh, he's, he's a cornerback for the Colts. And then the other guy was someone from his podcast crew. That was his four people that he had, you know. Let's talk about his uh, promo. Like, what did you – you know, I'm sure – He's said that in his head a thousand times. This is a guy that, you know, like him or hate him, he's been a wrestling fan for a very long time. I'm sure he's always wanted to just get in there. And, you know, he did a lot of this, a lot of head movement during his promo, a lot of pointing with four fingers, right? Uh, but overall, I thought it was good. I think, I, like, I actually felt, I believed what he said, how it's like, I knew you wouldn't come out here without these three stooges, so I brought 28 years of NFL experience with me. I thought that was a great way to start it. But, like, overall, yeah. I actually texted you during it. I was like, he's doing pretty good on the mic. Like, I thought he would say a couple words, but solid two, three, four-minute promo without a break in it. Like, I thought he did pretty good. What would you think? Uh, I like the fact that he didn't stutter at all. He, he's, he was he was yeah. focused. Um, the only thing I, I – if I was nitpicking, because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes I'm, I'm a nitpicker. Sure. Um, uh, who's the heel? I think it's Pat. Because <laughs> because Pat Pat McAfee was sounding like straight straight heelish through that whole little that whole segment there they had. Yeah. But I did like Adam Cole did because Adam Cole basically was, he didn't say much. All he had to say is I'm gonna kick your ass at NXT takeover. He said, I'm gonna make you my bitch. Is actually I'm make you yeah 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 I'm making um, you my bitch yeah like that that was that was awesome. That was a good segment. I loved it. Talk about nitpick. For me, I had no problem with what Adam Cole said. I had no problem with how calm he was walking up to him. No problem with any of that. He walked up to him without a mic in his hand. So that means he was either like, I, I'm overthinking it, but that means he was either mic'd up or they had like a boom mic under them for that shot. And that kind of threw me off a little bit because you could hear him too clear for it to just be caught on yeah. the camera. So, like, that threw me off a little bit. I mean, it wouldn't have hurt him to have a microphone, and he could have, like, dropped it at McAfee's feet or something. Um, yeah, mic drop or whatever. But um, <laughs> the um, the run-in of the security guards made me laugh because, like, he clears them out, and then he doesn't go after Pat. It's like they, they got there to stop you. You cleared these guys out. You know, they all powder out. And then he just stares at them like, yeah, what, what do you think of that? You know, like, the segment was fine. McAfee did good, I thought. But as far as who's the heel, like, I'm someone that watches his show. He has, you know, Monday through Friday, he has his, his podcast and his radio show. I listen to it three to four times. I'm rocking the For the Brand hat right now, actually. I just got it recently. So I've been wearing it a lot lately. Hey. So, um, <laughs> and he mentions on there, he's like, man, like, ever since he started doing the, the pre-tape or the pre-show stuff, every couple episodes, he'd be like, man, these wrestling fans hate me. And it's true. Like, anytime somebody tries to come from out of the world of wrestling, they're – very little are they accepted at all, but definitely never right at first. Yeah. Like you even look at the Stephen like, uh, Mill like, thing. He took it seriously, but people were just not having it, you know? Yeah, I felt the same way about uh, Sam, Sam Roberts. And, yeah, um, and he's and a, to me, he's Peter a wrestling Rosenstahl. guy. But to me, yeah, Sam yeah. Roberts, he's a wrestling guy. Like, he has a wrestling show not affiliated mm-hmm. with WWE at all. I don't mind him. I kind of like him as a personality, but – um. Yeah, something about wrestling fans, they won't let – I can't remember the last time. Like, in other companies, it's a little more – like, when we mentioned it, to me, the greatest non-wrestler in a wrestling ring was D'Angelo Williams, and the TNA fans ate that shit up. So, like, maybe it's just a WWE thing. I mean, back in the day, like, people were okay with Lawrence Taylor, I think, just because he was such a big name. But um, yeah, I think by default, Pat is the heel here, but – we're so used to Adam Cole being a heel that it makes it confusing. I guess mm-hmm. it really depends, you know, how you feel about it. If like, again, if you're like, like I want Pat to, you know, do well or win if it makes sense, but I don't need, I, in my opinion is he's the heel in this, but if he's not, someone didn't tell him because he's definitely working it like, like he is, you know? Yeah, for uh, sure. We are, I would, I was, I would ask you how you think this is going to go down, but we're going to do, um, we're going to do predictions for TakeOver and SummerSlam at the end of the show, so we'll just save it for that, I guess. But did anything else go down? I, I was I had eyes glued on the TV for that segment, but I didn't watch the whole the rest of the show as closely. So I know the ladder match for the North American title is, you know, uh, solidified. All the all the participants are now in there. What else went down on NXT, you know, that, that really that got you hyped for this show? 
Um, I'm really hyped for the Dakota Kai versus Io Shirai match. Yeah. Uh, Dakota Kai went against Kuzma, I think her name was. Mm-hmm. And um, and of course Dakota Kai won, which which I love that. I love the fact that they had an a help an enhancement match for Dakota Kai instead of throwing her into a tag team match with Io Shirai. Right. That's Keep in WWE. The, yeah, I like that. And then mm-hmm. um, then uh, Ra- Raquel Gonzalez came back. And now she got a body, her bodyguard back again. So I thought that was pretty cool how they uh, introduced her back into the into the fold. Speaking of not having them touch, just to go back to Mac B and Cole real quick, did it bother you that there was no physical, like even a shoving match or, or anything? Like, did it bother? Like, Pat didn't back down, but he also didn't step up. So like, he didn't he didn't look like a punk, but like, he didn't he wasn't necessarily overjoyed about being in. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. But, like, they they could I think a shoving match would have helped that segment a little bit. Uh, I thought so too, but then also I was like, uh, it, it did what it had to do because it yeah. made it made me more hype for the for the show, mm-hmm. um, for their match actually. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm still I'm still trying to figure out what they're gonna do, how is it gonna set up, how they're gonna set up this this these matches. I have a theory that I will get to in the predictions. Um, okay. It's not a great one, but it's the best I got. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so I think it's as good a time as any. We're talking about NXT, obviously, a big NXT championship match with Keith Lee and Clayton Cross at the, at the pay-per-view at TakeOver. Well, I say pay-per-view, but the network special, it's a pay-per-view, whatever. But um, so we were talking about earlier today, our top three for this week's going to be our, I don't know if it's, favorite or greatest but our top three nxt champions of all time so uh don why don't you start all right my top three we're gonna start off with neville um neville i love neville uh it sucks that he's not with wwe no more it sucks that he's stuck over the um in the uk yeah because he's with aew but he can't even yeah they could use him right now yeah yeah they definitely can um uh, he's 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 a great great on the mic, great heel, great baby face, super athletic, super fast, and um and it was, he he held it down for the, the little guys. He was a he was an NXT champion. He was that's a big that's a big deal. Yep. Um, number two, I got to give it to my boy Biggie E. Langston. You know the first African American uh, NXT champion. I love I, I love I love Big E. Um, from his New Day's days to his Dolph Ziggler henchman days, to and he him was by himself, the second ever as we we had to stumble through it, but he he was the second ever NXT champ back yeah. then. He did his you know I need five. He'd pin people for a five count. Um, yeah, no Biggie. Like I think we're gonna see more that more of the NXT champion Biggie here soon because as we mentioned last time, he's gonna be on a singles run. Um, but yeah, no great great pick with Biggie for sure. I think a lot of people. Because NXT wasn't on the ball back then. So if you haven't seen him in that light, uh, definitely we're checking yeah. out now because we might get a little little sliver of that now moving forward. Yeah, definitely. And then um, number one, I had um, – this was a toss. This was hard because mm-hmm. it was either Big E or this guy. Okay. Um, but my, my number one was uh, Andrade. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah. I liked Andrade as, as the I, – I, I love heel – heel champions because they make it they make it more fun uh, and you know Zelina's with him mm-hmm. and um and you, you never knew what Zelina's going to do during the match and um I, I just love that that hammerlock DDT that he does too yeah uh it's he it put out it put out Drew McIntyre <laughs> like he's like come on now <laughs> when he, when he had that, that five-star match with Gargano I just had the pay-per-view on and I think I, I had people like non-wrestling friends over and I just had it on in the background. We were playing games, drinking, whatever. And I just kept looking up and I'm like, God, they're still going. Like every, like if you told me Johnny Gargano had a five-star match, you'd be like, all right, you know, the news water's wet. Like that dude, you know, can have, can have five-star match whenever he wants. But the fact that he had it with Andrade, I definitely yeah. saw him in a different light after that. Um, and he's doing solid on raw, but yeah, definitely interesting. An interesting pick, but um, I do I do like it because again he <laughs> he made a believer af- out of me as champion. Like I thought he was just kind of your average, um, not to diss this guy. He never did anything wrong with me, but I didn't. When he first came, I didn't see much of a difference between like him and No Way Jose. I thought they were both like 
just kind of gimmicky, like fit the yeah. demographic, you know, check the box. Uh, but he definitely made a believer out, out of me after a while. Um, any honorable mentions? Uh, Sami Zayn and Big um, and Kevin Owens. Okay. Sami Zayn, because uh, I, I just like I like Sami Zayn a lot. Um, mm -hmm. This this is when he was a babyface at the time. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know which one is better, babyface Sami Zayn or heel Sami Zayn. But um, I mean, back back in the day, you couldn't have convinced somebody that he could ever be a heel. Like he was. Yeah. The 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 way they call Gargano the heart and soul of NXT. Like that was the Sami Zayn's original thing was basically original. That. Like yeah. yeah. Um. All right, yeah, then, uh, good ones on that. Then Kevin, then Kevin Owens, you know, Kevin Owens is Kevin Owens. Who yeah. doesn't like Kevin Owens, yo? No doubt. Great on, the, great on the mic and great in the ring. Samoa um, Joe was there, always up there too. The thing with, the, with this NXT list, I'm sure we'll do more like title ones like this. There's really no bad ones. Like, so it's really hard to, like, you yeah, could, to you pick, could to argue down. the worst one. You, you could argue it was Bo Dallas, but that was also the best run of his career. And if you watched it live, it was extremely entertaining. Um, Seth Rollins, too, like, as champ, it was so early in NXT that you did, like you didn't mm -hmm. know Seth Rollins the way you do now. But there's really no bad one. There's, there's good, and then there's great. There's really – I couldn't label anybody bad, which does make this list hard. That being said, my list came to me very easily, but it was hard to, you know, leave anybody out. Like, the honor, 19 guys have held this belt, and I – 12 of them could have been on this list already, you know, so that, that's how that goes. Um, number three, for the first time, not only did we both pick somebody, but we put them in the same spot. I also have Neville at number <laughs> three. Um, I kind of made this list as the most important champs, and it just so happened that I also really liked them. Neville was the champ when he wanted an NXT arrival, which is initially the first takeover, and that was when the cat was out of the bag. NXT was no longer – a secret people knew about it people started watching it weekly um it wasn't at the point that it is now but that doesn't happen without this and neville was that champ for you know if it wasn't a year it was damn near close uh so very important uh time period that he was the flag bearer he faced Sami Zayn. he faced tyson kidd tyler breeze he ran through everybody fatal four-way matches the second takeover at second or third nxt takeover fatal four-way is him, Sami Zayn, Tyson Kidd, and Tyler Breeze. Um, it's a, very much a hidden gem. I was there live for that. If you've never seen that Fatal 4-Way, uh, go check it out. It's incredible. But he's the champ in a very important time in NXT's history, so I got to give him the number three slot. Number two, for a similar reason, I actually have to go with Adam Cole, Bay Bay. Uh, again, they're on USA Network now. You know, you that was never the plan for NXT. It was supposed to be a de developmental brand. Guys like him made that not the case. Um, longest reign, obviously, uh, 409 days, 398 if you don't count tape delay. Um, that's a record that's not going to get broken for a long time. So even if he leaves WWE, which is rumored down the line, um, you know he's going to be the flag bearer of the longest champion for a very long time. Uh, number one is a guy you had in your honorable mentions. I have to give it to Kevin Owens because – Really great matches, like you said. There's nothing you can say bad about Kevin Owens, but the fact that he – so when Seth Rollins debuted with The Shield, he was actually NXT champion. No mention of it. When Big E came up with Dolph Ziggler, no mention of it. He was still NXT champion at the time. He dropped it a couple weeks in. Uh, I know where you're going with this. Kevin Owens comes out on Raw with the NXT championship, throws it at Cena's feet, challenges John Cena, and then beats him clean on pay-per-view. That is the biggest shot in the arm for – that is the thing that made NXT like what it is now. I think it's the most important moment in NXT history. It showed you – because prior to that, you had, you know, Bo Dallas come up, Big E come up, maybe in a group, maybe in a tag team. Maybe they're kind of like – you know, they're, they're knocking on the door asking if they can come in, whereas Kevin Owens just kicks the freaking door down. Uh, so, to me, it's yeah. the most important moment in NXT, and that's why he's number one. Um, honorable mention, also got to give uh, Sami Zayn. I did put him in there. Um, he was only champion for like three weeks, but the ride to get there was one of the greatest rides in WWE in this decade, I would say. And, you know, then it led into the Kevin Owens feud, which again, he won the title and we know how important that was, but for him to finally beat Neville, another guy on both of our lists, that, that whole string from Neville to Sammy to Owens is the most important, like three man stretch for a brand I can ever remember. 
And then the honorable mention, my other honorable mention, he would have been three, um, is Tommaso Ciampa. The only reason uh. I had I had to find – because he had to vacate the title. And that's it's not his fault. It sucks. But that's the only reason I put Neville ahead of him. Otherwise, Neville would have been in the honorable mentions for me. Um, just great run, dominant guy, great heel. You know, um, he got to the point – like, he was NXT. He said if they brought him to Raw or SmackDown, he would retire. Like, he cared about the NXT as a brand and really carried himself as a true champion. So – it sucks how that went down, but to me, that still makes him like the fourth greatest NXT champion ever, and I, I think that's still pretty good, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, great list, bro! Great list. This was fun. I'm like, you picked you. We didn't really have one leading in today, and you said it. I'm like, oh, I love it. Like, that's something I've always about Kevin Owens. That whole like, if you weren't watching back then, like, definitely go back and check out that whole Kevin Owens John Cena feud, like. It's stuff's crazy. I mean, Cena does eventually get his win back at some point, but that first one for him to beat him the first time, the first time they, you know, face each other. Absolutely crazy. Um, Still NXT champion. You know what's crazy too? Yeah. You know what's crazy though? None of us picked uh, Finn Balor. I like Finn Balor. Um, Same reason Samoa Joe, same, same reason for like Shinsuke Nakamura. That was in a weird, it was when Neville and Sammy and all them first left. And I think NXT was finding its, who's going to be the next guy. And they tried a bunch yeah. of other people. I do like Finn Balor. I do think that's still the high point of his WWE run as NXT champion, um, which I kind of mentioned that now that he's back in NXT, I kind of want to see him at that level again. Um, but we'll see if, if that can happen. But I mean, those guys, we just Samoa Joe and Shinsuke, that's easily numbers six, seven, and eight on this list. I think um, all the you way down. Have a to, bad list with this too. You know? Yeah. It's so just, it's just, Greatness all the way down. I'll take it a step further, though. If you had to pick a worst one, though, who are you picking at NXT? A 19, worst one? 19 guys have held the belt. Who, if you got to – somebody's got to be the worst. There's got to be a worst quarterback to win a Super Bowl. Trent Dilfer is it. Who is, you know <laughs> – some people say Brad Johnson. I say Trent Dilfer. But, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll, if you need to think about it, I will actually – I just had it. I hope I didn't lose it. Um, yeah, I got to I gotta say Bobby Roode. Like, his reign as champion, like, people loved that he was there, but the belt didn't make it any more special. I think he could have done everything he did in NXT without winning the belt. Without, so, yeah. I would actually, yeah, I'd have to pick Bobby Roode. My guess, well, if you, not, there's nothing against this guy. It's mm-hmm. just when you look at the list of the list of guys that they have on, on that, that won it, yeah. Bobby Roode is definitely one. Yeah. And then the other one will be Bo Dallas, just because, like yeah. you said, like, it just this list of people that they have there that is just great. It was just great all around and right. even better now mm-hmm. in, in the, um, well, some of them are even better now in, in, um, in yeah. the, on the main roster. Uh, yeah. About Bo Dallas. Yeah. I mean, if NXT would have stayed as a developmental thing, I think Bo Dallas would be looked at a lot more fondly, you know, mm-hmm. like we never expected back then that you'd get these, you know, new Japan stars and these other people. The fact that Samoa Joe was ever in NXT is like crazy to me. Like yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura. I remember watching like, him in TNA. Back yeah, in all, all that stuff is crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, hard list, like you said. Um, but I, no, that was a good one. That was fun. Um, let's go ahead. I don't think I really have a transition for this this week. So let's go with the who booked this shit moment of the week. We'll just get our both our segments back to back, and we'll move into um, the predictions after that. So, what made you say who booked this shit this week, man? Man, who booked this shit? All right. We're talking about the Shayna Baszler and Asuka versus Sasha Banks and Bailey. All okay. right. I always thought if someone comes from, you know, the outside and they hit someone in the match, that's a DQ, right? Typically, yeah. All right. So in the middle of the match, they had. Nia Jax bust the plexiglass onto onto Shayna Baszler. Uh-huh. Then they start fighting. They fight. They're fighting as the match is still going on. <laughs> the match is still going on. The ref is looking at them do this, and I'm just like, DQ. Yeah, where's the DQ at? And they ended up just making it like that. That uh, Shayna Shayna went to the back oh. to fight <laughs> off Nia Jax. Right, and then she partner. came back. Oh, yeah, okay. and then yeah, she yeah. came. Then she came back, and then on top, there's a there's a part two for this too. Okay, 
why did they have Oscar tap out Bailey when they have a match on Sunday? That doesn't yeah. make me want to watch the match. Right. This this match this match shouldn't even happen had happened at all. Yeah, there's no winner here because you need you want everyone to look strong. Well, yes. Like the DQ would have been the way to go because the Baszler Nia thing is obviously happening down the line. So just have it end that way, and then have the boom the champs stand strong or Oscar stand strong after. But yeah, you don't need nobody needs to take a loss going into the championship match like that. So yeah, yes, I, I, right. and, and on top of, on top of that, tapping out too clean. Yeah, tapping out clean, bro. Mm-hmm. No, shouldn't happen. I mean, I guess as clean as Nia coming and ripping her partner away and all this yeah. stuff. There was, there was yeah. nothing that helped her, but you know, um, you're. I don't think you're gonna like this one, but I have my reason. So, my who booked this shit is actually the name, the Thunderdome, for this new. It, it's the Amway Center. You can't tell me the Thunderdome isn't trademarked by somebody somewhere, right? Like, in two weeks. It's going to be something else, I guarantee you. Like, is that not a Mortal Kombat level or something? Like, we've heard that. Isn't it in Mad Max, that movie Mad Max, the Thunderdome, right? Like, that is trademark or something. I bet if I Google Thunderdome, WWE is not the first thing that's going to come up. So, (laughs) it's it's the Amway Center. You like, they do Raw and SmackDown from there all the time. You don't, you don't get to rename buildings, WWE. Like, they have sponsorships already. I don't know. I guess that was mine. I thought about I, when I heard the Thunderdome. I thought it was someone else was calling it that, you know, like the the fight pit or something. But like, I don't know what you should call it. But that's why buildings already have names. You don't have to rename them when you're there. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Nitpick to me, but I always thought the Thunderdome. Like when I heard that, I'm like, that's got to be that's something from somewhere, right? Like I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Again, it might be a nitpick, but that's that's mine this for this week. Um, so I guess other than that, let's jump into, and this is our first time doing these, so we will keep track of these. Um, we're actually watching TakeOver on Saturday together, getting the boys together watching that. Um, SummerSlam, I'll probably just watch whenever. But uh, we will keep track of these predictions. We'll see who wins each show, and then if there's an overall record, who did who did the best, just to keep a little, little friendly competition going there. So we're going to start with NXT TakeOver 30. Uh, so going into the go home show, there was only four matches, so you knew they were going to add a couple. Uh, so the first one here, it looks like it's a pre-show match. It's listed this way on Wikipedia anyway. It is a number one contender uh, for the tag team championship triple threat match. Which before I even say that, I miss when they like did that, like when there was number one contenders matches for stuff. I feel like AEW's done a good job of it, but like you don't see that a lot on Raw or SmackDown, like battle royals or mini tournaments or triple threats yeah for like so hats off to them for doing that um so it's breezango fandango and tyler breeze against oni lorkin and danny birch a very underrated tag team in my opinion and then um uh Ligo, how do you say it? d fantasmo the the team with uh jaquin wild and mendoza, Cole mendoza yeah. which i did yeah. not realize this but uh was it uh, Joaquin, jo- Joaquin Wild is actually Zima Ion from TNA. I did not realize that for a while. Uh, so who do you have be walking out as the number one contenders for the NXT Tag Team Championships? I said, why not give it to Raul Mandones and Joaquin Wilder? Why not give it to them? I also have them because uh, we just saw Brizango go for the belts. Um, the fact that the Tag belts aren't defended on the show is a head scratcher to me. Um, but yeah, so that being said, I, I would give it to them also. So we're going to either win or lose. And we're going to tie on that one, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I don't see why you, I mean, Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch, they're a great team. Like you can throw them in there and give Imperium a, a good 15 minute great match title defense. Whereas again, Breezango, I think they're there to walk the younger guys through the match. Uh, but we just saw them go for the belts and lose, so I don't think they're going to get another shot. Side note, yeah. Side note, I hope they do it like they um, the triple the triple threat actual like actual triple threat tag like yeah. Um, not not the not the way that WWE does it with just one uh, one from one team, another one from another team. Three, I want all yeah. three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Um, I guess we'll see how that part actually works out for them. Next, I have the North American Championship ladder match. You got uh, Bronson Reed, Damian Priest, Cameron Grimes, Johnny Gargano, and the uh, 
scandalous Vel- Velveteen Dream. A lot of people were upset that he got put in this place already. I'm not really one to speak on that whole situation, but it you know needed to be mentioned that some people didn't exactly love that he got put in this this spot here. But who do you see walking out with North America Championship? Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Cameron Grimes. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing Cameron Grimes win it. I think he'll be a great heel, uh, the person, that type of person that uh, that doesn't want to fight anyone. Like, oh, I got the yeah. championship. No, I don't want to fight no one. In, in, yeah, there, has, there hasn't been a lot of chicken shit heels in NXT, so it wouldn't be a bad – like, you never want too much of them. But, yeah, I can yeah. see that for here. He was – I was between him and, and my actual pick. Um, I would love to see Damian Priest win this. I think he's been in a lot of big matches and not one – and I don't want him to turn into Baron Corbin where they just, like, he talks all this crap and doesn't back it up. So, I mean, he's won a few, but overall, like, I think his biggest match is he's never coming out on top, like the Finn Balor match yeah. and everything else. So, I would actually – I would like to see Damian Priest come out on top on this. And this is pretty, like – this is pretty wide open. I don't think Velveteen Dream will win it. I think I – if I had to pick one against the field, it would be him. Gargano is, is possible – uh, Reed seems to be getting some form of a push because he's like the dark horse wild card in this match. Um, all right, so you got Cameron Grimes and I got Damian Priest. So let's do next. This one was just added. I'm actually really looking forward to this, and it's funny how it's just kind of a throwaway match. But Finn Balor and <laughs> Timothy Thatcher. I, uh, our buddy Larry, who's coming to watch it, he's a big Finn Balor guy, so he's that much more excited for the show now that he's on it. But um, I have to – I like Timothy Thatcher a lot. I think he got a big push beating Matt Riddle before he left NXT. But Finn Balor, as I mentioned earlier, they need a way to get him as as a big spot, you know. And I don't think he's got that since he's been back. So I think Finn Balor needs to win this by hook or by crook. I think he needs the win more than Timothy Thatcher needs it. So I'm going to go with Finn Balor. I was going to go with Finn Balor as well. Um, I there's I feel like we're gonna win. Both of us are gonna win in the long run. Yeah, because it's gonna be a great match. Yeah. Uh, Timothy Thatcher is a submission submission guy, and he, he's more of a ligament person type of person. And Finn Balor, Finn Balor is just awesome. So, and he so it's like he's basically heel right now, right? Finn Balor, he's been working heel. Yeah, fa- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. For the most part, he's a tweener. I would say like a yeah. Charlotte Fla- Charlotte Flair. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's do NXT Women's Championship. Uh, Iro Shirai and Dakota Kai. Say that five times fast for the NXT Women's Title. Who you got? <laughs> I got Io. I got Io just because I think it's, I think it's mainly just a just a what's what's the words a filler. throwaway a filler yeah a filler, filler match, uh, yeah. title match for her yeah. I think it'll be good. I think I think they're gonna oh, yeah. line up very well. Um, we're guaranteed a new champion in the North American title. Um, they don't tend to change a bunch of belts on the same show, so I would go with. I would also go with uh, Shirai. Um, again, I think Dakota Kai is kind of just there to put on a great women's match with her and then go back to Raw. Yeah, she, she, could, de- she, could, def- she could definitely do it, though. She could yeah. definitely do it. Um, and then just the, the, the wild ball, the wild card is also um, Raquel Gonzalez yes, being, yes. In the, being, being an outs- outfield, outside. It's very possible. But, again, if, if Dakota Kai wins, is she is she now back on NXT? Like, it, it creates more – Oh, no, she's been, on, she's, been on, she's been on NXT, though. The whole time? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah. You know, when they won the, the tag belts, she was on Raw with Asuka. And, Smack, you know, because that, that – when they're the women's tag champs, they kind of bounce around. So, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, yeah. So, all right. But I, I still would go with Shirai on this. I think uh, they're really yeah. – they want her to have a, a, a big run here. Um, probably the hardest match to predict: Adam Cole <laughs> and Patrick Mac. Uh, you, do you know? Do you want to go first? Do you want me to? Um, I've thought about this way too much today, so it's up to you. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start it off. Uh, I right. think, of course, I think I think Adam Cole is going to win. I think okay. I think Pat McAfee is going to is going to is going to show his ass. He's going to okay. be good. He's going to be good, and I won't be surprised if he ends up getting signed by NXT. If he does, if he does great, uh huh, I think he could get signed and become a wrestler and still continue with his podcast type of thing. Yeah, but I feel like I, I mean I, he would I, be a I, very he could, he could talk. He'd be a very limited. Yeah, like he's not gonna be on NXT every week, obviously, because he's got all this other stuff going on. But uh, I love the part in his promo where he's like, "I'm a, I've been a millionaire in seven different professions. I don't know what all seven are. I know podcast, football player, comedian. I know those three. 
Um, maybe announcer because he has starting to do that a little bit. So there's four. I don't know where the other three come from, but I'll take his word for it. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going with Pat McAfee to win by DQ. And then Cole beats the shit out of him at the end. Like, like he will leave him <laughs> kind of – because the thing – Pat has had one independent match from back when he played at West Virginia. You can actually YouTube it. So he's been saying, like, I am an undefeated pro wrestler. And he's going to want to continue to say that. So I don't know if it's the Undisputed Era get involved. Maybe he pulls in Eddie Guerrero or he throws the chair to him and falls. You know, like, I don't know if he's that much of a student of the game. I know he he does, like, wrestling a lot and everything. I don't know who exactly he follows. I know, like, Steve Austin and stuff. But it's kind of a cop-out. I'll pick – pat outright but i do think it'll be by dq so like even if you know he wins normal it's fine but like i think he'll find a way to outsmart adam cole in a, like like because he's gonna just want to get his hands on him at this point like he's if i'm if he's adam cole he's like i'm the longest reigning nxt champion this is the biggest takeover and i'm facing this idiot like what am i even doing yeah what am I um, doing for real? so i'm sure aj hawk will be there i'm sure his boys will be there like i love to see aj hawk tackle somebody that'd be hilarious take out Bobby Fish because he'll sell it like a madman or something. Uh, but, yeah, I will go McAfee. I'm thinking by DQ, but I'll pick him. I'll pick him anyway. Um, and then the championship match. Um, I probably should have spent more time thinking about this than, you know, I spent <laughs> way too much time on the other one. Uh, where is it? There it is. Um, Keith Lee and Karrion Cross NXT championship. Who you got? Oh, man. This is tough. This is very tough. Now, I could see Keith Lee winning. Mm-hmm. I just don't see how he wins. Yeah. So my pick, my pick is going to be Keith Lee. Okay. I feel like I feel like if they if they um if he loses, then he's get he's definitely getting called up. He's going to be in the draft later on in the year. Yes, exactly. He might go like I don't know when. Did they? Do we know when the draft is? Did they say? So supposedly on the conference call is. Sometime in October, between October and November. All right, well, if he loses, I think he needs to go away until October, which sucks. I enjoy seeing Keith Lee on my TV screen, but, like, he just needs to lick his wounds, you know, maybe get a promo or two of I'm training to come back better than ever, yada, yada. But uh, he can't just lose and then show up the next week and, like, get his yeah. rematch to lose again. Like, we can't, like – that's like an 18-wheeler getting all flat tires at once if they just bring him back. You know, because he's the you man. Know what I see they can do. What's up? I see them. I see them actually like like writing him off. That yeah, um, during, his, during his match. That's it. And then you know, he comes back. Mm-hmm. Did you see the possible leak of this? Yes, I have. With the, um, and, with the I, I don't. I don't. Thing. I don't think it was a leak, though. I mean, why else does he hold? Or for those who don't know, the WWE shop ad has Cross and his manager holding the belt as like a go buy a replica belts thing. Um, yeah, I saw it and I'm like, that's strange. Like, I think I saw it on Instagram or something. And it's like, I don't know. When else have you ever seen like, when else have you ever seen? Like, you're not just going to randomly see Damian Priest holding the North American title in an ad if he's never won it yet. You know, like that does seem strange. They've messed yeah. up it. They've done weirder things. Like it has happened, but um, not for that reason. More so to be different because we we agreed on a lot of these. I'll go cross on <laughs> this just to devil's advocate, I guess. But like, like you said, I can see Keith Lee winning. I just don't really know how. So um, I think you might have actually found the best version of this. Is he wins and Keith Lee is is injured and he's kind of away until the draft. I think that might be the only way to get out of this because as cool as this match is gonna be. I wouldn't have booked it this soon if I'm them, you know, who booked this? Sh- no, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it's going to be great, but I think it was too soon. Like if Keith Lee had won the title two or three months prior, it would have seemed like a natural collision, but really, I guess it's cross showing up and making a beeline for the belt. He didn't mess around. He had like one feud before this and then that was it. Um, so that's those. We will see that as six matches for this. We will give our record, Next episode, we'll do our record for each show and then overall. So let's move into, before we close the show out, our SummerSlam predictions for Sunday. Let's see here. We will start with – none of these are considered pre-show matches, but I almost guarantee you that the Raw Tag Team title match will be the pre-show. So let's start there. 
uh, Street Profits <laughs> against Andrade and Angel Garza. Um, both, I assume Montez Ford will have his wife with him, and then obviously uh, Zelina Vega is with Andrade and them. Um, I'm going to just say, because, again, it's probably on the pre-show, I'm going to assume, because they just got over the Who Poisoned Me storyline, which was, I don't know, decent at best. I'll go with Street Profits. I don't think their run is quite over yet. I, I'm going to go with them. Uh, that's uh, that was my actually my surprise pick is uh, Andrade and Angel. Okay, I mean if it's honestly like if the show starts and it's not on the pre-show, you're probably right. I'm kind of banking on this being a pre-show match, so we'll we'll see. Um, I kind of hope not because I kind of want to see it, and we'll probably have AEW on for that first hour of the pre-show. So like hopefully nothing too great is on it. Um, that'll <laughs> have some like our truth twenty four seven nonsense leading into that you know into the pay-per-view or whatever um number two let's go with the hair versus hair match got to bring that old memphis stipulation back there should be more hair matches and more mask matches obviously there's only so many dudes um they have masks masks these stuff, days, yeah. so you can't really do that as much they kind of missed a chance in nxt with the cruiserweight champ there he, he kind of just took it off anyway um so i'm gonna go with mandy rose winning because she's still somewhat doing her thing with Otis and that does kind of loses its charm if she's bald, you know, I don't see either of these women really going bald though. I think they're going to start cutting the hair and she's going to like run off and she's going to have like a crazy do, but like, I still think Mandy Rose wins mostly because she's still got the thing going on with Otis. Uh, I think so too. I think Mandy Rose is going to win. It sucks. Cause I love Sonya. I love Sonya Deville. Um, but Hey, she will pull off the, 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 the short hair. She she would sure, remind me of care. when CM Punk had the Straight Edge Society, and the chick he had, I I do forget her name right now, but like it, she she can pull that off. If if either of these girls are pulling off the buzz cut, it's it's gonna be Selena for sure. Sonya. Sonya, excuse me. Yeah. Uh. So that's that's how I feel about that. All right. So that's another one down. Where did I put that? There it is. Okay. Next up, we have um, this one's a little hard too. Um, Dominic Mysterio and Seth Rollins in a street fight. They both have Murphy and Rey Mysterio Jr. respectively in their corners. Who this was probably the hardest one to pick on this show. What do you think? Hmm. I wanna to I wanna say Seth is gonna win. But I know there's gonna be some shenanigans. It's a street fight, so like, Yeah. I think like, this would be a perfect time for them to have uh, Austin um Austin Theory to come back. Yeah. As a disciple, because I heard he was suspended supposedly because the whole that whole allegation stuff. Mm -hmm. I think so. Is is that your pick before I jump in? Yeah, Seth. Yeah, Seth. I think Seth is gonna win the match, and then the Mysterios maybe win the war. Like after he pins him, he tries some crazy kendos or his eye on the steps, and then you know Ray chases him off or or something. Um. Bonus question: Who better non wrestler performance of the weekend? Is it going to be Dominic or is it going to be Pat? Ooh, man, yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Right the hard hitting questions. <laughs> um, I mean, common sense would say Dominic just because he's actually been training much longer, and you know it's in his genes. But sure. I, I won't be I won't be surprised if Pat McAfee uh, turns up on something on some things. Nothing again. Some crazy moves. Nothing against Dominic, but we are also talking about a professional athlete on the other side. In, in, in better shape now than he was when he played professional football, which is was worth being said. And he's been trained by Rip Rogers. Apparently, he's actually pretty good friends with him. I guess he lives in the Pennsylvania area. So he might he have – John a, Cena. Yeah, so there you go. Um, <laughs> like, granted, Ray is going to show him the basics, but I don't see him jumping around like his dad. Like, he's almost twice his height. Like, he's going to have to have a whole nother – I don't like he's gonna pull out a six one nine. We all know that, but like, yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's a street fight. Do you think uh, Dominic has any sort of gear, or is he just jeans and WWE shirt or hoodie or something? Do you think he has any gear at all? Yeah. No, I don't think. Uh, they might make him something. They what might make him a mask while you, while you. Who? Hat. You think he's gonna have like gear, or he's gonna just like basketball shorts? Like. Come on. Come out in the joggers or the uh, the the, the cold joggers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many questions. I don't know. I'm getting off topic, but I, it's very it's very often it's not often you get two non wrestlers in the same weekend of shows, you know. So yeah, uh, and two two big shows at that. Yeah, exactly. So we both picked 
Rollins, are you with me on the – this won't count towards the points, but uh, do you think the Mysterio yeah. still win the war? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Rollins gets the win. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I know I know. We, you said Dominic might have the better. Like, what are you looking for? Like a six and a half ringness for him? A four and a half? What you, is he just going to be a punching bag the whole time? Like, he's going to pull off some stuff in this, I would think. Yeah, he's right? going to pull off. I feel like he's, I feel like he's going to sell his ass off and yeah. he's going to pull off some stuff. He's gonna uh, I'll, I'll give him about here. a six, 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 six and a half. Mm-hmm. And I'll give Pat, I'll give Pat about almost a seven. Yeah, just a little bit more. Yeah. Just a little, just a little bit more. Yeah. And again, we mentioned, and the bar is D'Angelo Williams. So again, if you haven't seen it, go look. And uh, I don't know that he's going to quite reach that. But if he can get in that ballpark, it's going to be awesome, you know? Oh, yeah. All right, what else we got here? So I'm going to jump in. I'll do this one first. I'm kind of cheating, but I'm kind of not because I have I haven't picked out. The Asuka versus Sasha and Asuka versus Bailey for the Raw and SmackDown women's titles. I'm saying Asuka wins one. She's winning a title. She's leaving with a title. And it's going to be whichever one is second. Like, I don't know the order, but – because the first person's going to beat her, and the next girl's going to come down. I don't know if they're going to be back-to-back or not. You know, they might put a match in between, have her selling backstage. They're going to, you know, let's say it's Bailey. Bailey wins, right? And then she goes to Sasha, hey, best friend, I softened her up for you. And then Asuka beats her, and it makes her look bad. And she gets embarrassed. So, I think Asuka wins a title, and it's whichever match happens second. So, that's, that is my double prediction for that. <laughs> All right. Um, well, actually, on Raw, they 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 made an they announced that uh, Bailey will be going first against Oscar, and then okay, Sasha so, will be going next. So my example so, still fits. Yeah. 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 It does. Cool, cool. Um, uh, I think the same thing. Uh, it sucks because I love Sasha. I love mm-hmm. Sasha. I don't. I don't want Sasha losing, but I do see that happening, and then I still. I I think that's gonna start uh, the 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 feud between Bailey and Sasha. Um, because, you know, they, they, they also got a match next week at Payback for the, ta- for the tag titles. Yeah, isn't it so weird that that show is a week later? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a, there's going to be, be a lot of rematches. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right, what do we got left? I think just the main stuff. Yeah, okay. So let's go with um, what do you think is going to be the main event? Do you think it's going to be the WWE title or the Universal title? WWE. Okay, so just they put, they're putting they're putting so much into the Randy Orton versus thing. Drew feud. All right, um, so then we'll go Universal Championship. I think this is the time that the Fiend writes the wrong of the whole Goldberg situation. Your original who booked this shit moment. I think <laughs> he, Strowman's done fine. I might even say he's done better than I expected as champ. But um, he beat Bray Wyatt. He kind of beat him in the uh. Wyatt compound thing until the fiend showed up. I think it makes sense for the fiend to win here. It's going to be with this Thunderdome thing. It's going to be great entrance. People are going to be, I think that they can do a lot of cool effects in this environment for the fiend. Um, and I think he, he does end up winning the title back. I think that'd be a great SummerSlam moment. Um, I'm actually going Braun. Okay. I can see it because now... we don't get to have nice things. Like, we love The Fiend. <laughs> and he's only had so many, like, he, he's kind of like every every loss does actually matter to him. He's His character is still so fragile after the Goldberg thing. But, um, I mean, they, they clearly like Braun. They've, they've wanted him in this spot for a while. And, again, I think he's done better than I thought. So, I could definitely see it. Um, I don't know if you have a reasoning, but, you know. Well, he's. I think just because he's going back into that gimmick of being an actual monster instead of – to, um, uh, just a dude making make jokes it. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he did the whole thing with Bliss, and I think Bliss might end up being brainwashed as Sister Abigail, which is something Abigail. the fans have wanted for a long time. I could see her coming out, um, with her hair dyed black, even, and just like you know, um, that's a whole other side of it that I didn't even think about till now. But um, I could see Braun. I get what you're saying. I just think that um, can you pin the fiend cleanly like i know goldberg did but that's almost like non-canon like can you have a, a roster guy just like beat him like i'm curious this is a normal match too so the whole thing can get thrown out yeah. they better not do that on a SummerSlam, but it is possible 
Um, yeah, all right, so that, that'll be – that might come down to <laughs> – that might be the winner right there, like decide who, who wins the show for us, you know, because that's, that's a big one. And then the final one is Randy Orton, who's probably on the best run of his career against Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship. This one's hard for me. Randy doesn't need the belt at all, but – which is why I'm picking Drew – um, just cause I don't know. He's also in a spot that this could be his defining moment. Like it should have been beating Lesnar at WrestleMania, but due to the way it was done, it was only so, so, um, I do think these virtual fans are going to make a difference. You're going to hear a roar of a crowd when he hits Claymore. Um, and Orton, this doesn't stop him from being the maniac that he is. He can literally on raw, go back to doing that, you know? Um, I mean, it would mean a little more if he was champ and he's kicking people in the head, but, like, it doesn't stop him from this great run. Um, so I'm going to go with Drew, even though Orton does seem really unstoppable right now. But I have a final answer. I'll go McIntyre. Because I don't think you even right. change – given my other pick, I don't think they're going to change both belts on the same show. So I got to stick okay, with okay. the other stuff I picked, you know? All right. So I think Randy's going to win. Mm-hmm. Here, let me, here, here, I'll tell you how. Okay. I have a feeling that – Ric Flair is going to swerve Drew. Ric Flair is going to Ric Flair is going to come in and make it seem like like he's like he's trying to screw Randy over, but he end up low blowing Drew. Randy Orton wins, and then they, then Monday they come out and say, "You really thought I got punted in?" The he head? never kicked him in the head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that bastard. That is great. I love that. You might be right. <laughs> that's good shit because why like i know they've done the the lights out but I, I mentioned it last week i'm like that seemed a little too placed right um yeah then does retribution have anything to do with orton did he pay him off to turn the lights off at the right time yeah. you know what i mean that could lead it, to that it could, yeah we i mean got one more match though did we did i forget one yeah apollo versus uh oh you're right MVP. okay yeah i should have thrown that in there but um i'm actually going mvp on this um, he Ooh. brought the belt in, and I think the Hurt Business, because you'll have – what I think is going to happen here is on Raw, which was actually a very interesting thing, when they had the six-man match, uh, Apollo picked Ricochet and um, – who was it? Um, uh, Rick, uh, Mustafa. Mustafa Ali, thank Ali. you. Um, and he told uh, Andra, or, uh, Cedric, Cedric Alexander to not – you know, don't worry about it, man. You're banged up. Don't worry about it. And he seemed kind of pissed about it. And then you see MVP talking to him. So I could see – when the, the backup guys try to, like, neutralize each other, and then Cedric comes out and kind of, like, burns Apollo. So I could see uh, him winning for that reason. Because then you'd have Shelton. He might lose the 24-7 title and win it back on the show at some point. But then you'll have two dudes with belts, and then maybe Bobby goes for the, the world title and, and finally wins it from somebody, you know, um, down the line. But, um, yeah, I'm actually, I'll go MVP on that. Um, I, sh- I, don't, I knew I forgot one because I, I was excited about that because there's a lot of possibilities there. I think that will be a good match. Um, oh, actually, Bobby Lashley and Shelton are banned from ringside, I'm reading, but I still think it's going to come down to Cedric somehow, some way. Um, all right. Yeah, I, I, um, I wouldn't be surprised, too, if C- Cedric turns on them, just because just the way that they, they presented it on Monday with MVP and, and all that stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't um, – I, I think MVP could win. I'll, I'll pick MVP. Sucks because I love Apollo as well. Yeah. I'm glad he finally um, got this chance. I think he he showed that he can he can be in yeah. there. You know, and he's definitely getting better on the mic too. Yeah, he's getting better on the mic. I love it. Mm-hmm. I think the her business is like, aside from Randy Orton, is like the second best thing going on Raw. Like I love everything about mm-hmm. it. Like when it happened in TNA when they were uh, the Beatdown Clan, I've mentioned this before. It was him, Lashley, and Kenny King, and Kenny King got hurt, and MVP had some legal trouble, so it really only lasted like a month. Um, so we never really got to see where they what they wanted to do with it. So I'm sure a lot of the ideas MVP had back then he's using now. Um, mm-hmm. And nothing against Kenny King, but, like, he's no Shell Benjamin. Like, that's a great upgrade for that group. Um, I wouldn't even, even mind seeing them win the tag belts if, like, they're not ready to give Bobby, like, that main event role. Like, Shelton mm-hmm. and Lashley together would be, would be something pretty cool too. Um, but, yeah, overall – um we'll see how we got six matches on saturday eight on sunday uh we'll see who wins each show and who wins overall um but i think that's gonna just about do it for tonight as always hashtag wrestle report pod let us know 
uh, what you guys think of the show so far. I've gotten a few texts and a few other uh, things from people saying that they're liking it so far. I appreciate that feedback. We're going to continue to try to make the show better, add more segments, and I'm also looking to interview some people in the wrestling business as our show goes on. I'm going to maybe after SummerSlam, something will happen on this show that, that'll be poll worthy. So I'll put another poll out on Twitter at Phil Talk Sports. Uh, let us know how you guys feel about that. It'll probably be about the McAfee match with something crazy is going to happen in there. Uh, here, let us know what you thought about his performance and everything. But until then, guys, enjoy a great weekend of wrestling. We got three shows on two days, so it does not matter what side you're on. We got a lot of good shit to watch this weekend, and that uh, we're very thankful. It looks like between AEW having fans and this whole virtual thing, um, we're we're making the comeback on the pandemic. We're getting the hot tag, and we're about to, you know, wrestling's about to come firing back. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Phil. That's Don. This is the Wrestle Report, and we'll see you next time. Peace.